coming up from the Northeast Live Studios in Guwahati. Northeast tonight with Wasbi Rusan. Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. The Congress's topmost leader in Meghalaya, former Chief Minister Dr. Mukul Sangma, and 11 other party MLAs have jumped ship and announced their decision to join the Trinamool Congress. Dr. Mukul Sangma called it a merger. It was known that Dr. Mukul Sangma was not happy with the state of affairs in the Congress, but why did he join the Trinamool Congress? Well, he said today that the Congress has failed to play the role of an effective opposition in the country and in the state, and that this was preventing elected representatives like him to serve the people to their fullest potential. He said the need of the R was a pan-India opposition that is ready to take on its opposition head-on and not treat them with kid gloves. Dr. Mukul Sangma said the Trinamool under Mamata Banerjee's leadership was that party that can be an effective opposition and therefore he and his colleagues had taken a collective decision to merge with the TMC. But how will this impact the political equations in Meghalaya that is going to the polls in 2023? How will the ruling NPP and its allies deal with the TMC as the main opposition overnight in place of the Congress? Why couldn't the Congress retain a tall leader like Dr. Mukul Sangba? To discuss these and more, I am joined from Shillong by, by Mr. H. M. Sangpliang, one of the Congress MLAs who has joined the Trinamool Congress along with Dr. Mukul Sangma. Also in Shillong, I have Congress leader Amparing Lingdo, who is likely to join me shortly. With me as well is David Lightflang, a veteran journalist. Political commentator Dr. Akhil Ranjan Datta joins me from Guwahati University and also in Shillong I have Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, professor at the North Eastern Hindi University and a political analyst. Gentlemen and lady, welcome to North East tonight. Uh, let me go straight to you, Mr. H.M. Sangpliang, uh, MLA of the Congress earlier, now whether or not he is recognized as the Trinamool Congress MLA by the speaker will be known in a couple of days, maybe by tomorrow. But Mr. H.M. Sangpliang, welcome to Notice Live. My first question to you. Your leader, Dr. Mukul Sangma, has said that Congress has failed to play the role of an effective opposition in the state and the country. And that's why you all have collectively decided to quit and join the TMC. My question is, is there any other reason for you all to desert the Congress? Uh, well, sir, I fully endorse uh, uh, the uh, views of my leader, uh, Dr. Mukul Sangma, when he mentioned about uh, the status of the Congress party <coughs> at the national level and also at the state level. Uh, besides that, I would like to also add on that uh, this has been a long-drawn uh, process uh, which culminated today in the joining of the Trinamool Congress. Uh, the fact uh, is because uh, we have seen uh, that uh, the aspirations of the people have not been able uh, to be met uh, adequately uh, by being in the Congress in the sense like uh, we have been elected since 2018 and uh, we did not see any scope as such uh, of any formation of any government nor any scope of uh, uh, any kind of an alignment with uh, any political parties and therefore um, uh, it uh, really takes a toll on us as MLAs uh, of the Congress uh, when we go and meet our people uh, and there are a lot of uh, uh, expectations of the people that we need to meet and therefore I think uh, yes uh, we have taken uh, a very uh, sound decision I feel that uh, that we would look uh, towards a new entity where uh, there would be sufficient space for us, uh, you know, to to find out uh, a new dimension. Right. Uh, Mr. Sangpliang, uh, I'll come back to you soon. Let me go to Mr. David Lightflang. Uh, 
a very well-known journalist and commentator joining me from Shillong. Uh, David, uh, you know, how, how do you look at this development? How is it going to impact the political equations in the state? Because we are having the elections in 2023 and Trinamul Congress is an absolutely new player. How, how do you think the people are going to accept this? Uh, set up Congress leaders overnight becoming uh, leaders belonging to the Trinamul Congress. How do you look at this development? Well, it's a very interesting development, uh, Wasbir, and I, I'm I'm yet to become a commentator, but uh, it is yes a very interesting development, a sudden development, I must say. In fact, uh, one of the first questions that I asked Dr. Mukul Sama after his briefing today was, uh, "How did you keep it so close to your chest that uh, yeah. you know?" We thought the lull was there, and we thought the st storm was almost over. But then suddenly this whole tsunami kind of a decision. So, uh, well, hats off to Dr. Mukul Sangma. He kept it to his chest as he had promised. Uh, on, on the flip side, I really do feel sorry for the Congress party because uh, I, I think everybody in deep down in their heart wouldn't have wanted it, whether it's the congressman or whether it's the people um it's it's been a difficult decision i guess for the 12 and like he said probably uh, more may uh, come along it's just that since time was crucial uh, it was a vast sense and it was critical uh, they decided to you know do it yesterday well having said that what does it augur for meghalaya interesting there'll be a lot of news was beer uh, again meghalaya will be a political hotspot as usual Dynamics, political dynamics here evolve and change overnight. We are otherwise a very peaceful and a quiet uh, lot. But then uh, with 23 around the corner right. and uh, on the ground, people are really, really very confused, I feel. Uh, they're not too happy with the NPP. Some say, some are reluctantly saying so. Uh, now people are saying what's wrong with the Congress. They thought there was an alternative. But uh, the Congress is completely a battered ship. And uh, so let's see right. what evolves. But yes, it's going to be very, very interesting days. And as a journal, I'm seriously looking forward to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said, David. Uh, we are all looking forward to the turn of events as the days follow. Let me turn to you, Dr. Okhilranjan Dutta. Uh, Dr. Okhilranjan Dutta, uh, what is going on in the Congress party? Uh, because, you know, do, do you get a sense somehow that the Trinamul Congress is desperately trying to, you know, emerge as the main opposition in the country. Is that what they are working at? Do you get a sense like that? Look, definitely the Trinamul Congress has been trying its level best to emerge as uh, one of the credible alternatives. Because, you know, if you look at the overall national politics today, it's not the Indian National Congress, INC, Congress Party which is going to be the uh, truly the alternative to the incumbent regime. It, is, it will be the combination of regional political parties which will uh, be providing, if at all, they will be providing the alternative to BJP government or incumbent government. Because if you look at the overall politics in the country, it is right. the regional political parties uh, which are emerging as the uh, credible, uh, you know, challenges to BJP. Now, if you look at the Eastern India, if you not East, I'm not telling North East, but if you look at the Eastern India, it's not the Congress, it's the TMC, which is the alternative. In North East India, we have seen that uh, it's all, almost all regional political parties have sided with uh, the NDA. And in Assam, and it's interesting, in Assam, uh, uh, almost all, you know, many of the Congress legislators are, you know, uh, you know uh, joining the BJP. And there have been indications that more and more Congress legislators will be joining BJP in the coming days. Right. There will be by-elections. So if you look at all these developments, uh, you know, I think uh, for an ambitious uh, politician like uh, Dr. Sangma, uh, you know, Mukul Sangma, who had been uh, Chief Minister, and they have been looking at that what could be their future. Rather than being concerned about the, uh, you know, uh, principles that they have been holding for quite a long time. Right, right. It has also become an issue of personal ambitions. And if you look at from the perspective of Eastern India, they might be thinking that, no, they need a support. 
apart from their own resources own capacity to mobilize votes they need a support from a, you know uh, having uh, some political party which is having national implications i think uh, all these things have a played played very important role uh, for such a drastic right. uh, you know Uh, major right. being undertaken by the Congress legislature. Okay, uh, uh, Ach Prasenjit Biswas, Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, uh, you know, a lot of people are asking this one very question: Why has the Congress not succeeded in retaining its important regional satraps? Because Dr. Mukul Sangma is the seventh Congress chief minister, seventh Congress chief minister to have quit the party since 2014. since the advent of the bjp or for that matter since the advent of uh, mr narendra modi is the seventh congress cm so what do you think what are the reasons where has the congress failed why is it not seeing the writing on the wall yeah first of all congress being a more sensitive federalist kind of party it had alliances with the regional federal forces one has to remember this so when regional federal forces are gaining ground some of the sensible elements within congress party are coming out of congress's top down structure there is this party bureaucracy there is this party sectarianism within congress the in fighting the group of 25 and 29 and there were indications that congress people who are federal in temperament can jump out and join regional federal forces and that's how tmc is gaining ground now mukul sangma was cornered suffocated in the congress party and suddenly congress has brought a new person on the block and although uh, mr vincent pala is a political maverick but mukul sangma being an experienced veteran should have been tilted a place same is the story in punjab channi sidhu and amrinder singh kind of a story is repeating in the case of meghalaya and by joining tmc Mukul Sangma has opened up a new formation a new sweep not only for Meghalaya but for the entire country and i am sure right. tmc is going to have a lot of spin into it and they are going <coughs> to have a regional <coughs> federal agenda based on which regional forces would come together under the broader umbrella of trinamool congress and trinamool is sharing off its bengal skin and it's trying to become a pan indian party and northeast being next door to bengal has uh, has found an impact has found a trusted ally in trinamool congress especially by the regional federal forces such as mukul sangma right. or raijor dol or any such <coughs> formation with which tmc can ally Absolutely. naturally and Abs- that process has just begun Absolutely. and you can see many more tail spins going to happen in the process we we'll yeah. have to we'll have to we'll have to wait and watch today Today, the rise or doll leader Okil Gogoi has said that the Trinamool has reached out to him. We are not going to discuss that right now. Let me once again, uh, before coming to Mr. David, once again, let me go to Mr. Sang Piang. Uh, Mr. Sang Piang, uh, you know, uh, do you think you could you could not serve the people? Do you think you could not serve the people to your fullest potential while being in the Congress? Was the atmosphere not congenial? because one of our commentators dr prasenjit biswa saying that dr mukul sama may have got suffocated that is the word he used but what do you think was that atmosphere not congenial for you to work to your fullest capacity to serve the people uh well to a certain extent yes i i agree with you mr waspir uh in the sense if you had seen the the past uh, uh the way that uh, the our congress mpcc president dr dd lapang was removed uh, by the high command uh, just in the midst of the uh, election the general election of the meghalaya assembly and he was removed in the december 2018 uh, very unceremoniously i mean these are uh, one of the reasons and one of the examples rather i should i can cite today uh, of the manner that the congress uh, is functioning and uh, for the last 2 uh, years uh, we have had a president who has never been active he has been dormant throughout and every time we uh, had to go to delhi to request for a change of the president even then that never happened and it took a long time seriously 
for the Congress to really decide on the name of a president until just about few months back, uh, Dr. Vin uh, Mr. Vincent Pala's name uh, was, uh, was selected. So this is the manner if the party uh, continues to function, uh, be it at the state level or the, the national level, uh, then uh, it kind of uh, frustrates uh, uh, leaders like us who wants to work. Right, right, right. Mr. Sangpyang, you know, you took the name, you took the name of Mr. Vincent Pala, Mr. Sangpyang, but there were reports that Muk reports, and Dr. Mukul Sangma had also talked about it both directly and indirectly, that the Congress High Command did not consult him despite being the CLP leader uh, before appointing the new PCC president. You're absolutely right, sir. We were very shocked uh, because uh, uh, we were very surprised rather to see that the name of uh, Mr. Vincent Pala just popped up uh, from nowhere. Uh, rather, I should say that uh, Dr. Mukul Sangma was uh, called to Delhi uh, and he had already booked a flight ticket to Delhi to go to have a consultation and a meeting in the selection of the president. But the night before he left for Delhi, uh, that night itself the notification came out. And we do not know. I mean, we were totally surprised uh, when Dr. Mukul Sangma told us that, look, this is the way that the high command is functioning. Absolutely. Uh, there, Mr. Sang Pliang, who has just uh, joined the TMC along with Dr. Mukul Sangma and others, uh, saying that, you know, uh, the Congress High Command did not inform Mukul Sangma while appointing Vincent Pala as the PCC president. I'm coming back to you, Mr. David uh, Lightflang. Uh, David, uh, you know, uh, now, now we have seen that the NPP is the dominant player in the MDA alliance. They have the regional parties with them as their alliance partners, as well as the BJP. Now, the TMC becoming the main opposition party, do you think the TMC has the potential to alter the apple cart for the MDA? Do you think it might change the balance of power among the regional parties? Okay, uh, David, uh, you have to you have to put your audio on. David, you have uh, you have switched off your audio, uh, so please put your audio on. Can you hear me, David? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My question okay. to you, if you have heard me, now that now the Trinamool Congress is the main opposition party in Meghalaya. Now NPP has its regional allies plus the BJP. Do you think that and TMC has the potential? Do you think the Trinamool Congress has the potential to change the apple cart, change political equations in Meghalaya? In Meghalaya. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I'm not too, uh, well, too certain by saying uh, the TMC, but I think uh, Dr. Mukul uh, has the ability to change the axis of power. He has proven it by taking 12 out of 17 and uh, overnight uh, made the new group the principal uh, opposition is a subject to uh, now it's a you know a matter of the speaker uh, acknowledging it uh, with, as the under the provisions of the 10th schedule which he earlier on told journalists and uh, they're already uh, the principal opposition as well as overall with 12 they are the largest uh, second largest after the NPP so that in itself is you know, I mean you the the data the statistics the figures very clearly uh, show that nobody has to claim uh, secondly uh, when you know no following having followed dr mukul over uh, many years uh, is a person who once he embarks on a journey he endeavors to fulfill that mission and yeah. complete the the goal so yeah, I think it will be, and uh, it'll be a big gain. It's actually a win-win for for him, for the TMC, and uh, of course, if uh, what he said earlier on, and what other fellow legislators have uh, stressed upon, right, the ability to right. optimally serve the people, then it's good. Yes, but it will be a game changer. Twenty-three Absolutely. is not going to be an easy uh, cakewalk for anybody. 
Right. Uh, uh, David right, Lightflung, uh, they are saying that TMC indeed has the potential to alter the political equations in Meghalaya. Uh, now, doc, doc, Dr. Okilaranjan Datta, uh, you know, basically, when, when coming to the fact that uh, now the regional parties are alliance partners of the NPP, which itself is a regional, regional par political party, NPP itself is trying to increase its footprints in the whole of the Northeast. They are trying hard in Manipur. They are, they are trying hard in Arunachal Pradesh. Assam also, they contested the elections. Now, overnight, NPP had the Congress as its main opposition, opposition uh, party. They knew how the Congress worked. But suddenly, they have the TMC as the main opposition party. They don't know as yet how the TMC is going to operate in Meghalaya. What kind of uh, strategies the TMC, this is come an element of surprise there. Do you think that is going to upset the political calculations of the NPP and its alliance partners? Okay. No, we have to wait and watch uh, because, you know, uh, for the incumbent government, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't think that they'll find it very difficult to handle the opposition because they have the, uh, you know, majority they need to run the government. But the point is that there will be aggressive campaign. That's yes. the important thing we need to remember. Because if you look at the Northeast India, NDA, whether a BJP led NDA uh, or, or NADA, whatever you call it, uh, has been very aggressive in terms of reaching out, reaching out the uh, smaller regional uh, political forces, and that has been the strategy. Now, Congress has not been successful in doing that. Now, with the coming of TMC, I think that will be the headache for the incumbent government. With the coming of TMC what kind of new negotiations take place with the smaller regional political entities who are now with uh, with the nda with the nda you know national democratic right. alliance i think that will be the biggest headache because you know uh, because all the uh, smaller regional political forces or political parties in North northeast india will always be comfortable with any political uh, alliance or political formation which is in power at the center. Therefore, they will also be looking at the possibilities of, uh, you know, change in guard or change in, uh, you know, whole political uh, formations uh, in Delhi in the, uh, you know, next general elections. And TMC uh, being a very aggressive political force, all of we know that. And I think it is only TMC which has been in a position to politically challenge uh, the, uh, you know, BJP leadership. In that particular context, I think the main headache for the incumbent government in Meghalaya, or for that matter, NEDA, uh, you know, right. the bigger challenge, will also they right. reach out other smaller regional political forces uh, in Northeast India and will be in a, a position to create an alternative alliance to that of NEDA. Right. Now, now Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, uh, you know, we all know, everybody knows that the BJP, as far as elections are concerned, is a very, very, uh, you know, a party that applies a set strategy to win elections. It's BJP is a very aggressive political party. So is the TMC. We, what we have seen in Tripura in the last couple of weeks or couple of months is a testimony to that. It's a battle between two aggressive forces. The TMC has no base in Tripura, but TMC has managed to hog the limelight through whatever way. Now, the point is, do you think uh, Meghalaya will be any different because the TMC is an aggressive political party? And Dr. Mukul Sangma, Mukul Sangma uh, has today, during the press conference, he has attacked all the three forces together. He has attacked the Congress because he has left the party. He has said that the, that the, the Cong Sang Sangma, Conrad Sangma-led NPP government is installed by the BJP. Thereby, he has attacked the NPP as well as the regional allies. So do you think it's going to be a battle? Of, it's going to be an ex aggressive poll battle in 2023? Uh, obviously, this new turn that uh, Mr. Mukul Sangma has taken has rattled and rather created an earthquake in the stillness and the peaceful political scenario of Meghalaya, as the, uh, <coughs> Mr. David had already said. <coughs> the other important point that Mr. Uh, Sampliang had made is about development. Now, Trinamool Congress's agenda of development is very different than <coughs> BJP's agenda of development, in the sense that Trinamool Congress promises job reservation, 
protection of land, protection of identity, language, culture of the local community in its manifesto. Now, BJP cannot localize itself. It has to remain a national party. TMC directly localizes itself. And that is why TMC can become an aggressive oppositional force. And I am sure uh, Mr. Mukul Sangma's able leadership would create the right kind of vibe and the right articulation for the people of Meghalaya. And a lot of political actors, those who are waiting in the wings, will jump to TMC Benduagon at the right time. And I can see the indications. Indications of talk and the grapevine that TMC would be able to articulate even an issue like ILP in a much better way than any other national party is something which is already in the grapevine. I have been hearing it today in the <coughs> university. So therefore, I can see a large prospect of TMC emerging and occupying the space of the regional <coughs> party as well. So therefore, TMC will be able to deft very clearly the, uh, the kind of politics that BJP or Congress or NPP would be playing and would be able to counterpose them by its own version of localism and regionalism, right. which fits into the larger framework of a federal opposition right. that uh, M.K. Stalin had talked about a few months back in Chennai. So that model is working in Meghalaya through Dr. Mukul Sangma very, very well and very, right. very happy, no. I must say. No, I'll, I'll, I'll go for a break. But before that, uh, David Samplyang, Dev, uh, sorry, uh, David Lightflang. Uh, David, you know, uh, basically, what kind of a new strategy do you do you think? Do you think uh, that the do you think that the Trinamool Congress will be accepted by the people of Meghalaya because it's it's going to be a new force. It's going to be a new party. The people of Meghalaya have tested the regional parties. People of Meghalaya have seen the BJP for quite some time now, and of course, they are very familiar with the. Congress. But what about the TMC? How easy or difficult it will be for the TMC to establish a connect? Uh, well, uh, uh, Vazbir, we have to remember <clears throat> that the TMC is not new to Meghalaya because uh, late Mr. Porno Sangma contested the MP elections and won. Uh, that was later on when he rejoined his old, uh, this, uh, he went back. But then uh, the TMC is not new. It, is, he has, it has had its electoral foray into the state. And if I may say so, successfully in Garo Hills. The fact that uh, 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 Mr. Porno Sangma was our, uh, you know, our MP from Tura, uh, he won it on a TMC ticket. So it's not new. Besides that, everybody suddenly, you know, we're talking about TMC, especially in the eastern part of the country after the West Bengal elections. Because the TMC then kind of uh, came out as the one force that uh, withstood the onslaught of the NDA, the might, the power, the money, everything. They were they stood, uh, you know, against it. And they stood tall. Uh, the other aspect is that it is also seen as a party that is more secular in its presentation, in its thoughts, in its philosophy, in its ideals. And, uh, you know, it's not a secret. Everybody knows that uh, Mamta Banerjee loves to go to the church, uh, work, you know, respects uh, Mother Teresa and the missionaries of charity. So all of these factors, and we are uh, largely a Christian-dominated state. Catholics are uh, sizable in number. So all these factors are going to come into play. And the one thing which I had mentioned the other, uh, the, I mean, uh, uh, previously was the was the fact that you see the people are saying, look, we've had five, almost five years of the NPP, but we are still broke. Teachers uh, remain unpaid. Our uh, power bills are shooting sky high. Uh, there's hardly end. There was uh, uh, just a cosmetic rebate on the fuel. Yeah. People are. Right. We have, I mean, there's a lot of okay. problems. I wouldn't Absolutely. like to paint Absolutely. my state. In, in such a nasty Absolutely. light. Absolutely. But I that is what the people are seeing. Right. It's not the media that is saying. Absolutely. Uh, when you see it, you report it. It's, it's I'll, plain I'll, and simple. I'll go they for look at the Congress with hope, saying that, well, at least there had begun a dialogue where people, a, narrat a narrative, if I may say so, that people would say that uh, 
at least during dr mukul's time things were happening and you know everything was okay we'll have to we'll have to wait dory. and watch we'll but have to wait and watch how well, how david their, david, uh, you know, david we'll have to their, david we'll have to wait uh, and watch how things pan uh, out i'll go for a short break don't go well be right back we end the middle of this discussion the factor trinamool factor in meghalaya politics don't go well be right back Uh, welcome back. Uh, let me go once again to Mr. H. M. Sangpliang, uh, MLA of the Congress Party, who just joined the Trinamool Congress along with Dr. Mukul Sangma and ten of his other colleagues. Uh, Mr. Sangpliang, the Congress Party is expelling all of you and is moving the Meghalaya Assembly Speaker with the argument. that the tmc does not have a legislative wing in the state that you have only merged with the parliamentary group and so you should be booked under the anti defection law mr sangpliang uh well uh, they are welcome to do that sir because uh, we also have uh, consulted a, a team of legal experts uh, before we uh, took up this decision and uh, legally i think uh, we are on the right track Uh, because last night when we met the honourable speaker, uh, the honourable speaker had uh, taken a little bit of pain in uh, consulting the Constitution of India book. He had taken out and he had gone down through the pages of the of the Constitution of India, and he had uh, read few of the paragraphs and said, "Yes, I think uh, your papers are in order." So now it is all depends uh, up to the Congress if they want to go, and uh, they are most welcome. Because I think we are very sure of. Uh, our uh, documents and our papers all right uh, mr mr sangpliang they are saying that yesterday when dr mukul sangma and the team met the speaker the speaker examined their papers and also examined certain paragraphs of the constitution and said your papers are in order that's what uh, mr sangpliang is saying so if that is so we'll have to wait and watch how the speaker finally gives his verdict but uh, mr sangpliang another thing i would like to ask you you know during the press conference today dr mukul sangma said there is need to take one's opposition head on and cannot treat opponents with kid gloves besides he said that the tmc has to look beyond the borders of meghalaya does this mean that tmc has set its eyes on the entire northeast as a whole absolutely sir because uh, uh, we could see that uh, there is one party uh, in the country at least uh, which is uh, secular uh, there is a party that uh, has uh, roots at the grassroots level there is a party that uh, can define uh, a lot of works uh, for the people and there is also uh, the the seriousness uh, of the uh, tmc leaders Uh, who means business and who really wants uh, to take uh, not just uh, uh, at the reg uh, regional level but also at the national level we could see uh, that's why uh, how tmc has expanded towards goa we could see tmc expanding towards tripura and uh, i think the next target is uh, assam and manipur and so on and therefore yes uh, megala is uh, also uh, joined the uh, the bandwagon i should say absolutely no dr okil ranjan datta there is a school of thought which would like to say that the congress the indian national congress has already actually split when leader after leader is leaving the party and joining other parties or floating parties of their own it can be considered as actually the party has already split into many factions that is one interpretation uh you know unlike in the past when the congress had split uh into two groups uh you know that led to the formation of the congress i at one point now do you think uh, do you do you agree do you subscribe to this view that the congress actually has already split 
No, Congress has Congress is a fragmented identity now. Even if uh, there is one party, if you look at what is happening among the tall leaders of Congress, they are already fragmented. So the fragmentation now has been taking a very formal turn in different parts of the country. The reason behind is this that uh, the Congress leaders, whether at the national level or at the you know grassroots level, local level, regional level. They cannot be out of power for quite a long time. And now they have seen that uh, kind of leadership, national leadership, which is there uh, for the party, will not be in a position to take, uh, you know, uh, the uh, incumbent government very aggressively. So therefore, what has been happening at different, uh, you know, levels, at the regional or local levels, that Congress, uh, you know, Congress uh, workers, or Congress legislators, for that matter, have been looking for alternatives. And if some of them feel that, uh, you know, BJP is the alternative, they'll be joining BJP. Otherwise, uh, you know, they have also been exploring or looking for other alternatives. Therefore, in the eastern part of the country, now TMC is emerging as an alternative for many of them, uh, as is the case with Dr. Mukul Sangma and other legislators in Meghalaya. But remember, it is also mutually reinforcing for TMC, and that's the most uh, important point we need to remember. If you look at other regional political parties, dominant regional political party, whether it is DMK or for that matter, TDP and other regional political parties, they are confined only to one state. Now, TMC, for that matter, Mamda Benazi, who has now been trying to uh, project herself as the leader of the uh, you know federal alternative to BJP. Therefore, she has been trying to uh, make her presence fail in right. uh, other states other than West Bengal. I think for that she has taken uh, you know the Northeast India very seriously. Right now, that will be the bigger challenge <clears throat> for the incumbent government in Meghalaya and for that matter, NEDA as a whole. Right. And remember, there are a lot of con in case of Assam. Look at uh, Assam. And uh, the Congress legislators are very disappointed. Some of them already have joined the BJP. Right, right. There are some legislators, right. they have been also yes. looking for alternatives. Absolutely, now, absolutely. Okay, okay hold your thoughts. Yes. Let, me, okay. let, me turn to, let me turn to Dr. Prasenjit Biswas. Uh, Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, uh, you know, uh, Tripura is a different ball game. What could be the Trinamool strategy in Meghalaya? Uh, do you think, uh, you know, since they don't have a base in the state, do you think they are going to align with regional parties? And if so, most of the regional parties are in alliance with the NPP-led alliance, that is the Meghalaya Democratic Alliance. So what could be the road ahead? What is your expectations? Uh, let's say Trinamool Party has a good base in Garo Hills because eight of the newly joined MLAs are coming from Garo Hills. So a substantial electoral support base is already there in Garo Hills. As far as Kasi and Jaintia Hills is concerned, you can see veteran leaders like Charles Springrope and also very impactful leader like uh, uh, Mr. Shampliang, who is there in this panel. And uh, you can also see... Uh, uh, for example, George Lingdo in Umroy or Shitlang Pale in uh, Sutunga constituency. So it shows an early, early inroad that Trinomul is making in Kasi Jaintia Hills. In Garo Hills, they have made a substantial presence. Now, as far as alliance is concerned, uh, Trinomul uh, Congress will find new allies, maybe in the voice of People Party or certain other political forces, uh, especially the NGOs, the other students and youth groups will be closer allies with TMC, provided TMC articulates uh, the local demands in a very, very significant way. So therefore, uh, the entire possibility is open for TMC to expand its base in the most unexpected and forcing corners of electorate of Meghalaya. And it, is, it, it will be able to provide a larger base of coming together of a variety of communities, tribes, social groups right. and also ethnic um, ethnic bodies and students and youth wings and therefore it will be able to mobilize a substantial section of electorate in Kasi and Jaintia Hills in Garo Hills it is already mobilized I can say that yeah right uh, now David uh, who do you think could be the possible new allies 
of the Trinamool Congress in Meghalaya. Uh, do you think there'll be new allies? Do you think that Trinamool is likely to target or start likely to you know, have alliance with people who are now partners of uh, the NPP-led and MDA? Uh, well, uh, uh, that's for, you know, it's any, it could be anybody's guess, but I'm looking at uh, a very uh, strategic kind of an approach from Dr. Mukul and his team in the sense that uh, uh, I don't think they would probably be too keen on uh, trying and getting as many on board as soon as possible. I think they would like to consolidate uh, the ground, the ship, and like what uh, my uh, friend uh, Nurul was just mentioning, uh, you know, if, if, uh, they already have a base in Garo Hills. Uh, they now have shown that all uh, the Congress MLAs from there are uh, ready to, you know, uh, start afresh. So that base is working very happily for them there in Garo Hills. So obviously, here in the Khasi and Jaiti Hills as well, they have shown that uh, leaders from both the sides of the uh, eastern both parts of the eastern side of the state uh, are have come on board. So the I think Dr. Mukul and his team would first like to consolidate their position at the ground as of now before looking at alliances. Mm, having said that, uh, you, we've been uh, reading about and we've been hearing reports about uneasiness in the smaller coalition partners uh, of the of the uh, MDA after the by-election results because. Uh, the NPP got, uh, you know, extra and, and so did the UDP. And uh, so mm -hmm. the the gain was for both the UDP as well as the NPP and utter loss for the Congress. So obviously, uh, the smaller parties uh, are, uh, I'm, I'm told, a little uh, jittery about what's going to happen to us because between uh, the UDP and the NPP, they already are at the threshold, uh, 50 mark. So, you know... You don't know what might might happen. Uh, it's very dynamic, I would say. But to uh, look for an alliance, I think what they would, uh, what the new group, or uh, once obviously it's announced as TMC, right. uh, the TMC in Meghalaya <clears throat> would then uh, like to rope in right. like-minded, uh, you know, former Absolutely. legislators or legislators. No, let me. But my gut feeling says it will try to rope in, uh, you know, quality rather than quantity, and uh, I think age will play a sizable. Absolutely. No. Let's uh, uh, let, let's let's see uh, how things uh, turn in the days ahead. Let me turn once again to you, uh, Mr. Shang Pliang. You know, I was asking this question earlier uh, to another panelist, uh, Mr. Shang Pliang. How is your difficult could it be for the TMC to make a connect with the people of Meghalaya because this is a party uh, which uh, you know was there to some extent earlier but it has not been in the scheme of things for a long time. So it's a relatively uh, fresh entry into Meghalaya, one may say. What do you think, Mr. Sankhliang? Well, sir, it's like this. Now, Meghalaya, uh, we have uh, a lot of parties, <coughs> already political parties that are already uh, in existence. <coughs> uh, very recently, we have just uh, heard uh, the voice of the People's Party, which is uh, uh, floated by ardent uh, Basayomoid. Now, sir, TMC uh, is not a new thing to the people of the state. They have been hearing about uh, the, uh, the victory of, uh, uh, of the TMC in West Bengal. And uh, I think uh, it's time that the people of the state also uh, try and uh, 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 meet uh, new challenges and uh, also to, uh, to also take up with the new parties. Why? Because, sir, uh, right now we already have the, the Congress. People have seen how the Congress function. They've seen the NPP, they've seen the UDP. And uh, I think uh, this is the right time for the people of the state to give an opportunity uh, to make their choice. Uh, and having good, having good sound leaders uh, in this TMC group that we are now, I'm sure with many more uh, leaders who are in the pipeline to join uh, the TMC, uh, I'm sure we are going to do well in the 2023 general elections and uh, hope to form the government then. Right. Uh, Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, uh, at times we have seen that the people look for a change. But if we go by that logic, 
Even the NPP is a relatively, you know, new player in Meghalaya. It is the first time that the NPP has formed a government. First time that Conrad Sangma has become a chief minister. Uh, now, now, you know, pe political parties like the Congress have done three terms in a state like Assam, for example. Manik Babu was there as the chief minister for five, for almost five terms. What about Jyoti Basu earlier in West Bengal, so on and so forth. But now, what kind of a scenario do you see in 2023? TMC, a relatively new player uh, with a lot of aggressiveness under the dynamic leadership of Mukul Sangma, who is a dynamic leader, uh, you know, and he is an aggressive in his own, own way. And Trinamul Congress's aggressiveness, we know. BJP is itself an aggressive party. Conrad Sangma is another dynamic political leader in the state uh, who is a, you know, go-getter kind of a person. So in this kind of a backdrop, we see an interesting battle ahead, isn't it? Yes, I mean, the battle is going to be almost neck to neck. But as <clears> people <throat> expect uh, a new face, and uh, Dr. Mukul Sangma is able to refurbish himself or repackage his political ideology in the form of TMC, and that uh, shows a lot of drift and attraction <clears throat> especially by the, you know, dark horses of politics and also by certain segments of society. So his chips are up more than maybe the existing uh, political dispensation. And this creates a new kind of a political spin. It all depends on TMC's organizational strategy now. How this new wave towards it, new interest towards it, especially from the parties which are internally disaffected and part of the NPP coalition, uh, some of these uh, parties and players may become important game-changing players and TMC has to go after that and has to establish right <coughs> kind of alliance. So all this will depend on the chemistry <coughs> that's going to emerge in 2022, which is going to be very interesting, I must say, and disgruntled mm -hmm. elements, people who are deprived in their own parties, We'll also look for a new opportunity in the right. TMC. Therefore, <clears throat> TMC will open a new shop, a new right. departmental shop. Right. I am I am I am I am running short. I am running short of time, Prasenjit. Which will attract a lot of people. Right. Yeah. Uh, now, Doctor Doctor Okilranjan Datta, I am I I am almost uh, about to wrap up the show. But 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 Doctor Okilranjan Datta, uh, you know the Congress Party. Now now take the case of Assam. The BJP from five seats in 2011 to getting 60 plus in 2016 and winning the elections. Do you think uh, that was because the BJP has been an extremely aggressive political party? It is a won the elections in 2014. The Assam elections were just two years down the line. They were able to dislodge the Congress. Now, in Meghalaya, do you think the, the, the Congress from five seats will be able to make it to 31? Are they in the reckoning at all? What do you think? No, no, I, I, I don't think that uh, after <coughs> these defections, after Dr. Mukul Sangma and uh, uh, another 11 legislators uh, you know, defecting for the part, from the party, Congress <coughs> will be in a position to uh, put up uh, you know, credible challenges <coughs> to the incumbent government or incumbent regime, rather than... Rather than that, I think this new formations will be in a position to do that. And you remember that uh, for TMC, there is a benefit in uh, the states in Northeast India other than Assam. In case of Assam, they have, a, they have the disadvantage because of the NRC. Uh, in, because on the issue of NRC, uh, the uh, Mamta Benazi or right. TMC uh, <clears throat> is having a position which is not being endorsed by the mainstream ethnic Assamese people. And that's right. not the issue <clears throat> in case of other Northeastern states. Absolutely. Therefore, they'll be trying their level best to and uh, you know intrude or consolidate themselves. The other advantage they have that despite many regional political formations uh, you know, becoming part of NEDA, they have the apprehensions that aggressive Hindu talk is detrimental to their own culture own belief or own whatever you call customs and traditions, Buddhists and so on and so forth. Correct. I think based on that... I have, to, I have to, to, I have to stop yes. you there, Okhil Ranjan Datta. Yes, uh, okay. David, uh, your final comments. David. My final comments is that we 
finishing up, wrapping up COVID. We're coming to terms with it. Now we're going to come to terms with a new political drama. I hope it's the end that solves the interests of the people. Yeah. I just hope that all these shifts and all of these alliances and all of that actually, uh, you know, usher in the people. Next year, we are going to celebrate 50 years of our independence as a state. Uh, I wish we could showcase much more. But uh, right. I just hope and pray that, uh, you know, the further new developments will be positive for the people. On the flip side, it's very sad for Meghalaya, a small little state, to be embroiled in such politics and controversy that actually draws down the people and the state. On, uh, the, <clears throat> uh, on the other side, the happier side, I would say, you know, let's pos possibly look towards a greener pasture. Right. And uh, I'm sure the people will be at the helm one. People will decide. People are smart enough to decide. They know what is good and what is bad for them. Uh, final comments from you, Dr. Prasenjit Biswas. At the very end. Prasenjit, final comments. Hmm? Okay, uh, Prasenjit, we have. Let me let me turn. Uh, let me turn to uh, Mr. Sang Piang for his last words. Mr. Sang Piang, in 2022 elections. Meghalaya would see a triangular contest, isn't it? NPP and its allies on one side, TMC on the other, and of course, there is the Congress. Mr. Sankhyang. Yes, yes, absolutely, sir. We are going to have a, a, a very good battle, I, I guess, and uh, TMC uh, should be uh, the, the alternative, and uh, TMC will be the party that uh, would be coming up in the next uh, 2023 elections. So, and, and, and uh, Mr. Sang Piang, you would fight the election battle in a peaceful and democratic manner? Absolutely, sir. Uh, that, is what, that is the motto and that is the theme of the whole uh, uh, spirit behind us. And we are going to get more uh, people coming in, joining us. Uh, there are a lot of uh, good, good leaders who are already in the line. And uh, once we set our house right, and uh, we should uh, be able to let you know more of the people who are uh, already keen uh, to be part of the TMC. So, so that, uh, Prasenjit Biswas, you know, that is a very, uh, you know, sensational parting comments by, by Mr. Sang Piang. He said more people are in the line. Very soon we'll be able to give more news about who are the people going to join us. So that's a very uh, confident statement coming in from the... TN, TMC camp in Meghalaya. Your final comments. Uh, it will be a battle between NPP and TMC. It will be a battle of knobs, also of fetching allies to their own sides. And whosoever will be proving to be more maverick, whosoever will have a better trick in their uh, arms, will really gain ground and will be able to finally win the battle in 2023. Absolutely, because uh, that is the thing. Very interesting battle ahead in 2023. And as Dr. Mukul Sangma said uh, earlier today, when the, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. That's what, that were the words of Mukul Sangma today at the press conference. And of course, the two tough players, Conrad Sangma and Mukul Sangma, once again, East Meghalaya are going to see a battle of the Sangmas in 2023. Conrad Sangma on one side leading the NPP and its allies who had the BJP on its side and Dr. And, and, and Dr. Mukul Sangma as the leader of the TMC. On that note, I thank all my panelists for participating in the show and the viewers for watching the program. Good night and goodbye.